So I'm sure a number of you have already heard about this. For those of you that haven't, Discord.py is back. It has been resurrected from the dead by Danny himself, uh, which came as quite a surprise um, to, I think, a lot of people. I don't think a lot of people really noticed that it happened. Uh, it's been unarchived and worked on for about the last two weeks or so. And I'm not, sh I'm not sure how many people saw it in the Discord.py server. I'm not really active there at all. But um, as far as I can tell on other servers, no one really realised that it had actually been restarted. And there are a few reasons for this. I will leave the full gist in the description below for those of you that wish to read it. I recommend you do. You know, this is mainly going to be my kind of take on it and my opinions on it. But I would recommend you read the source as well, obviously, for, for full clarification. Especially if you haven't heard of what's going on before and you want to... Um, and you want to kind of see what's going on. But essentially, um, a quick TLD on why it came back. Uh, Danny has said here that versions API versions 6 and 7 are being retired on May the 1st, 2022. So the stable version will die, or any bots using the stable version will die on that date. I thought that was common knowledge. By the wording of this, it seems like Danny didn't know that. Which I'm not sure if that was just a misunderstanding or what. But everyone I've ever talked to about this has been in, you know, very much in agreement that bots were dying earlier than that, actually. So I don't, yeah, I'm not really sure what happened there. Um, and yeah, it's, it's mainly just kind of ecosystem stuff around that. And also, well, yeah, along with the ecosystem too, it's saying it's become too fragmented because there are now a lot of forks about. So what it was before, was you had discord.py and then you didn't really have anything else. You had Hikari, which is I think the second most popular in Python. But that couldn't really shake a stick to it even slightly at all. You know, the only time anyone ever really became aware of Hikari for the most part was, um, you know, when people uh, started talking about it in my server and then we went over to have a look and then we kind of decided to switch over. This is way before discord.py shut down. We kind of decided to make the switch because we thought it was better overall. And that's kind of when people started becoming aware of it. A lot more people started becoming aware of it when Discord.py went down. Um, because my video obviously redirected a lot of people there. There were a number of other sources redirecting people there as well. Um, so there were kind of a few people redirecting people. You have people going over to Harta as well, which is another one. And Pinsir, which I think is kind of a newer one. All, all bespoke ones. But... Generally, even before, even then, you had, you know, Discord.py and this tiny, tiny little competition. Um, didn't really have anything to worry about, which is bad. We all noticed, we all saw what happened to YouTube. Oh, goodness. I just broke all of my fingers there. We all saw, or we've all seen what's happening to YouTube over the last few years. We've all seen what's happened to all these different companies that have a monopoly and then just give up trying. And, you know, Discord.py is very much the same. And that's bad. But when it, you know, when it died, you had all these forks. There were so many of them, and there's like 20 of them, I think. I'm not even kidding. I think there is about 20 of them. And they're all vying for attention, all fighting, and all being bitchy towards each other. And that's also bad, because there's just too many, too many ways to do it. You know, Python is all about one obvious way to do it. When you have 20 different ways to do it, all of which virtually identical to each other, do you, you know, what do you do? You know, there's, there's not really anything there. And there were a few that rose above the others, but not really. And it's all... I think most people still use Discord to pay anyway. <laughs> which is kind of funny. Um, but yeah. Essentially, I think a lot of that... That's what Danny said about it. About why did he come back. I think he intentionally missed some things in order to not appear too confrontational. And I, I really do think this. And I, if I'm wrong, I will take responsibility for it. But I'm pretty sure there are some other things, especially with some of the posts that he's made, that kind of indicate that he's not too happy about the forks. Um, I've se I've seen screenshots of him accusing. I think I've seen screenshots. I mean, I've seen screenshots of so many people accusing it of just really bad code, um, because everything. The thing is with the forks is that everything was rushed. Everything was rushed to hell to get out of the door as fast as possible 
so they could, you know, be the next big thing. And the problem is when you rush things, is they don't go well. We've seen what happens in the AAA game industry, with every single AAA publisher just rushing everything, and then it's all shit. It's all terrible. And we don't learn. <laughs> Nobody ever learns from anything. And everything is just rushed to hell, and it's all rubbish. Essentially is what's happened. Um, and to be honest, I don't think it's that happy about some of the, and again, swearing, shitty practices that some of the, um, the forks have adopted. Not looking at anyone in particular, Pycord. But uh, he's mentioned he's mentioned a few times about you know f uh, forks like monetizing essentially his work just with a few extra screws bolted on. And yes, screws bolted on, not screws screwed in or bolts bolted on, screws bolted on. Um, that's a metaphor. But uh, yeah, I, I don't think I don't think he was ever really happy with the direction that any of the forks took. He was always very vocal, at least from what I saw. Um, about, you know, forks, just just don't use them, essentially, is what he was trying to say to people. And it was, it was very much in the server, you know, don't use alternatives, don't do this, that, and the other. And then eventually, Hikari talk was able to open up just to get people to move to there rather than use forks. So he was never very happy about it. Um, and I feel for him, honestly, I do. I feel like he's stuck in the middle of an impossible situation because Discord.py became so big. I think it's like the 27th most popular library. I'm I'm kind of spitballing there a bit. I will I will verify that and put that on the screen. I will fact check that and put the actual number up. It might be quite a bit lower than that actually. I think it's a bit lower than that. It's definitely in the top like 100 and something. Um which is mad. You know, for for an API wrapper at all that does one specific thing, that is insane. Hugely popular thing. Um, essentially nearly single-handedly built up the full Discord bot industry. You know, Raps was the first person to build a bot. Discord.py was literally the first one. I think Discord.js is bigger, but Discord.py is the second biggest one uh, out, of, out of Discord stuff. And then it died because he was unhappy with how Discord were handling everything. And you could you took one look at the gist and was like, yeah, I'm, I see that. I don't blame you at all. <laughs> And now, I don't think anyone could have foreseen exactly what would have happened from that. And I think I think he's coming back because he feels like he needs to remedy it. Because I think what seemed like a good idea at the time may have been a bit of a mistake. Uh, I think is what's going on there. You know, I'm not claiming to be able to read his mind. If I'm wrong, you can tell me. But I I do think that a lot of that is is that, and <laughs> it seems like a horrible situation to be in. I don't envy the guy at all. Um, but, uh, yeah. It, with news like this, you then have to think about what most people are going to do. Because are people going to stick around with what they've got, or are people going to move back? And I think most people will switch back to Discord.py. Um, I personally would recommend it. If you're on a fork and you're not you know, you're not up to switching to Hikari because it's too much work to rewrite or whatever, you know, people have their reasons, yada, yada, yada. Um, I would recommend switching back to Discord.py over using a fork because Discord.py kind of, it's not the most well-written thing in the world, but it does kind of know what it's doing. Um, and yeah, it's better than the forks is all I have to say about that really. Um, so I, I do think most will switch back because Danny's back. You know, I've already seen a few people say that they're going to switch back because of Danny. You know, he's become a bit of an idol uh, among uh, among Discord bot developers. And I think a lot of people are going to go back to support him. Uh, especially after he publicly condemned the forks. The rest, which makes up probably about 25 to 20%. I genuinely think a solid three quarters of people that switch to forks are going to go back to Discord.py. I think the rest will either stick around with what they've got because they can't be asked to redo it or we'll just go screw it and switch to, you know, Hikari or Harta or Pinsir or one of the others, you know, one of the others that's has a seemingly stable development cycle that isn't, you know, activating and deactivating and being forked all over the place and all this. Something that's a little bit more stable, uh, I suppose. 
But I do think most people are going to end up back on Discord.py. And honestly, I'm not too mad about that. I think that's I think I think that's the less I think that's one of the least worst options. So I'm fine with that. Um, but ultimately, you know, you, you need to look at the implementation and be able to work it out for yourself. So, you know, he, he goes into all this detail about uh, whether Discord is improving. Generally, he doesn't think it does. Uh, and there are some new features about the... And then the rest of this just goes into kind of new stuff in the actual thing. So modals have already come out. Um, I think I think Discord.py might have beaten all the forks. And this is one thing I'm very impressed by. Like, it wasn't in development for ages. And then suddenly... It has all the features that all the forks do. It's like the leading one in terms of features all of a sudden. Which is as impressive as it is worrying. You know, the whole rushed out the door thing we were talking about earlier. Um, I am uh, apprehensive about how well this has actually been done. I've, I've seen a few opinions and they say that the implementation is not great. Maybe. Some people like it, some people don't, I think is generally the idea. This command tree I don't understand at all. I'm sure there's a reason, but I don't really get that. About what that's actually doing. <laughs> it seems a bit strange. But yeah, and then you have yeah all the groups and slash commands I think are in here too, more than likely. Context menus already... Okay, yeah, context menus already in there too. The modals and everything. It's It's a lot. It's an awful, and this choice, which is basically just like a wrap around, but it's, it's abstract. It's also done abstractions of stuff. Like how much have they done in like two weeks? This is all two weeks. This is bonkers. How does any of this work? <laughs> also, it doesn't do automatic syncing, which is it just seems like a just a bad decision on, on the whole. But whatever. Um, and yeah, I I don't know if I'm even gonna bother trying this new stuff. No, I switched to Hikari a long time ago. Way before this got the pie died, as I said, so I don't know. But I feel like, you know, I made a video on Discord pie dying. I feel as though it would be almost irresponsible if I didn't make a video about it coming back. I reckon a lot of people probably want to know what I think about it. So this is what I think about it. I think overall it's a good thing. Genuinely, I think overall it is a good thing that it's come back. Um, because it's gonna, because so many people are so idolized towards Discord.py that most of the people from the forks are gonna go back and it's gonna, it's pr it probably is just gonna unfragment it. Straight up, I really do think it's gonna fix a lot of the fragmentation problems. Um, it does make me wonder what's gonna happen to the forks, especially now that the library is active again and most of the library, most of the forks have changed their license and removed Danny from the copyright which wasn't really something they could do anyway. But I do wonder what's going to happen. Because they are now in violation of copyright, technically. If they, um... If they remove Danny's name. So that is going to be weird to find out. But, uh, yeah, I suppose, you know, this was announced, what, yesterday? 21 hours ago, at the time of recording. It's a midnight, okay. That's weird. Um... But yeah, those are my thoughts. That's my two pence. Again, I would recommend you know reading the the gist when you can. I'll link to it in the description. And I guess I'll see what happens. And so will you. And so will everyone. Because it would be an interesting time. Um, but yeah, if you like this video, then leave a like to let me know. If you want to see more, then subscribe. Because I'm probably going to do more talky videos and stuff. Wait, I'm going to start doing more of the Perfect Python series. I'm going to make more videos again, hopefully. Um, it's, I've been, I've been kind of procrastinating, but I am going to go back and do that. So, yay. And yeah, I will see you for that.